It looks like we now arrived at Bowser's home castle known as... Chaos Castle? Hey, what is up everyone? I'm Piglet here, and I'm Sonic the Hedgehog here. We are back for some more of yet again for the likes of the Mercy Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Mario Party 10 for the Nintendo Wii U. So last time, we have managed to able to explore onto Airship Central, which is probably the coolest board in the entire game so far. But today, we're about to begin the final board in the Mario Party 10 Mario Party mode, and this board is known as Chaos Castle. Despite the fact that Bowser's name wasn't even on there, but at least we can able to actually guarantee about the fact that once again, that just like in Mario Party Island Tour, that's basically it's like a Bowser themed board. And it's going to take place in some sort of like a magma lava kind of castle environment. But except this time around, rather than just going to be taking place in a peak or volcano or anything like that. Because as far as what this, uh, this name of this board applies, we're actually going to be exploring onto the castle itself. But before we get onto that actually, let's head on to 2 versus 2 to start off with in Murky Maze. So even then though, uh, yeah, let's get this thing to it. Find your teammate in the dark maze. So we were originally trying to able to do this, but he forms of our uh, the first attempt of this uh, particular recording session. Well, in this case, the first attempt, but we somehow just keep on getting stuttering around like a moron. And also, not to mention, we were going to do this as in the second attempt for able to do this commentary recording session. But unfortunately, we just got interrupted by the forms of that, you know, that buzz source or anything like that. Which, either way, yeah, that's one to classify that. For those of you who want to know, that has been quite a while since we actually uploaded this. But either way, though, thankfully, that we did manage to get things sorted. So... And also, this minigame reminds me of, uh, Team Treasure Track minigame from Mario Party 4. Except a noticeable difference though, Sonic, is that rather than just looking for treasure or keys, instead we need to be able to find each other joining the actual team. Oh yeah, there's gonna be some every once in a while though, is the fact that we need to dodge a lot of those plotter boos at the beginning. Because what happens is, is the fact that if you somehow accidentally get touched, by plotter boost, this means about the fact that you lose mini stars. So, something's worth mentioning, by the way. So, even then, though, out of all the actual boards in Mario Party 10, that, um, alongside with Airship Central, this is by far as one of the best boards in the game. It's clearly because of how the fact that most people seem to always enjoy Chaos Castle, despite the gameplay style was a little bit more mixed feelings of it, despite it was very similar to Mario Party 9's gameplay style. But either way though, that this board, it plays pretty uh, fine as it is. Even though way more up there than the forms of how it does it on Mushroom Park to me though, despite the visuals do look very, very gorgeous to look at, especially this is still in HD and everything. But um, I kind of wish there was more variety in, um, in Mushroom Park. But thankfully, that in Chaos Castle and Airship Central, they did at least able to actually add in some variety on them. So, in this case, on this first part in particular, as you can tell, that we definitely need to avoid a lot of plotter boosts from the very beginning. Now later on, whenever we get onto the second part of this board, and especially noticeable on the third and the final part of the board, that uh, things get a little bit more interesting to say the least, but either way though, let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet, because either way though, as you can see on screen, we're actually going to be obviously selecting Mario for the final grand finale board, in terms of every single Mario Party games, this means it will include uh, the redo let's plays of the Mario Party games past, like 1 through 8, so even then though, that just like in Mario Party 9, and especially noticeable with Mario Party Island Tour, and, um, well, just a little bit on Star Rush, and also same applies to the Top 100, and even Super Mario Party, that's how uh, we always attempt to select Mario for the grand finale portions of the entire main board themselves. Well, the only exception is, of course, um, the Top 100, because the Top 100 only has one board, which I was like, are you for real? Uh, anyway. And as usual, the computer players are going to be the Hatch Brothers, basically, which there are Luigi, Wario, and Waluigi, just like the usual from the likes of Mario Party 9, and especially noticeable with Mario Party Island Tour, Mario Party Star Rush, and I would say in Bloom Bash mode or something like that. Yeah, I'm thinking about that too. 
And um, also same applies to the top 100 in a minigame match board. And finally, perhaps even most notably, any forms of Super Mario Party's finale board for, you know, Mario Party mode and Partner Party mode. So, yeah, I just want to classify that for the, for the sake of time, for those of you who want to know the usual... And, you know, the character roster that we always attempt to choose each and every single time. So anyways, we got ourselves the next free for all minigame. Next up we have is Magma Meltdown. So we'll definitely have to double check on our minigames that we have not played yet, so... So either way, though, get off the sinking rock platforms. So, feels like a survival kind of style of minigame like this. Except in noticeable, uh, you probably notice is the fact that we can't actually jump or punch to each other. But, we can at least able to do one thing that you might able to find a little bit more sneaky as a result. And that is, well, as soon as we get onto that one of the platforms, that uh, you can able to shove players like Waluigi, for example. Yeah, because of that, though, you can able to do that with computer players. I'm probably not going to recommend trying to do that with the, uh, the human players, because otherwise they exactly know what we're going about to be doing for planning. So, either way, though, that's all I can really doubt for anyway. So, yeah, a few things we want to explain about this for the sake of points today is the fact that recently, today's day is, of course, the 16th of May today, in this case in 2020. So, we're naturally speaking, we're actually on the halfway point in May already. And as a result, um, you know how the fact that when uh, Duffy and Tiana are still carry on doing, uh, you know, the, in terms of likely not only Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, which uh, those who are about to be get back onto that game at some point in next Monday, but eventually next Tuesday that uh, Tiana should be all set, so that way she can able to participate and afford to make a comeback in uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Let's Play. So because of that though, yeah, we, she was really looking forward to able to going back into that game at long last, after the events of, uh, you know, challenge stages and sub-sub games in general. So, either way though, it's nice to be able to let Tiana get back into that game before we move on to the next game in the series, which is Kirby Triple Deluxe, Kirby Superstar Ultra, Planet Robobot, and even Star Allies. Even though despite the fact that we still haven't got, you know, the 3DS capture card for this point in time, just because still the coronavirus is going to be able to be get itself to second impact or anything like that. So I don't think we can able to get the 3DS capture card anytime soon. So either way though, let's... Let's not worry about that right now, because we now move on to the final mini-boss battle, which appears to be... Oh, goody! We got ourselves Mega, Mega Cooper, Swing and Stomp. However, though, I have to admit the right away, this is by far one of my least favorite mini-games of this whole entire boss battles department. Attack! Press 2 to jump for a chain... from a chain, sorry. So yeah, it's a bit like uh, the Mega Goombas uh, Ladder Leap minigame, except rather than dealing with the actual uh, the ladders, instead we have to rely on the actual swinging chains in order to be able to deal the damage on Mega Koopa his himself. So yeah, it's kind of like that, except um, to me though, not because, um, as I said before, that this is probably is the most definition of my least favorite boss fight in the whole game. It's not because it's hard or anything, but rather just because it's rather tedious sometimes, and it's incredibly uh, daunting to me though. Because basically, all you have to do is basically is how to like get onto the swinging chain, and then if you time your jump at the right time, then that's how you expect that you can able to deal the damage on Mega Koopa. But if you time at the wrong time, then you're probably going to miss your attack, such as this. However, the bad thing about this minigame to me, though, is that I swear, my death perception is almost like... Kind of like depending on timing based or anything, but since we actually still suck at the forms of timing jumps and everything... So this means there's going to be plenty of times where we're able to actually miss uh, judge a jump, or even especially noticeable we accidentally get hit by certain hazards and all that stuff, which even then though, to me, is definitely one of the most, uh, kind of a more of an annoying boss fight to deal with in my opinion. Plus, another thing I don't like about this boss fight compared to the rest is that it took way too long sometimes. I know it's down to our opinion, but most people seem to have their own opinions as well. But either way though, I just found it a little bit tedious sometimes with the sake of this battle right here. Alright, come on, we need to able to hopefully try to catch up, come on. Alright, hopefully it should. Oh, we could able to actually finish him off for that jump, but Luigi make it there in time. Ah, so we're literally now in fourth place. 
Ah, uh, oh well. Hopefully we'll get some more mini stars along the way. I mean, relatively speaking though, Piglets, but this is actually going pretty rough at the beginning. But hopefully until whenever we get on to, uh, the next few portions worth noting for, that, um, hopefully we'll get ourselves a little bit more better in between. Even especially noticeable for trying to able to constantly win mini games and all that stuff. But, you know, just for actually actual consequences or anything like that, so... So, so far, I'm presuming that Luigi's was actually in the lead right now, which, kind of think about it, that's actually kind of convenient, because even then, though, that he actually keeps on getting himself a whole bunch of mini stars throughout the whole entire premise for that. So anyways, and here we go on to the second part of this segment, or in this case, in this board, and that was the fact that we need to dodge a lot of those skewers here. However, if you somehow accidentally land onto those, uh, unlucky spaces, not only does it allow you to able to lose your mini stars, but also it will able to push you back to the very beginning, depending on what walls you're able to go to. So even then, it's just a matter of the forms of sometimes it can be pretty luck, while other times, oh, we actually got, uh, one more number left, which, if I recall correctly, it will actually have to be, I don't know actually, because unfortunately for the sake of time, our Wii U gamepad's battery life is somehow died, so we can't even tell which one of the last numbers would it be, but even then, I will have to get, we have to guess here. So, before we go to that, let's use the 4, 5, 6 dice block, so that way we can able to get ourselves, of course, some mini stars from there. And, you know, as I mentioned this before already, this is the grand finale board in terms of the Mario Party mode, and because of that, though, this will be the last time we're gonna come across into the Mini Stars gameplay style. Or in this case, for, this, for the sake of time, that we don't need to worry about just trying to able to go in a nerve-wracking situations anytime soon. But uh, at least we got ourselves a double, uh, slow dice block, so that will come in handy, especially noticeable how the fact that if we really want to go after something, Specifically, you know, mini stars in between, then we should be able to be uh, a little bit more, you know, rather more like, I don't know, how do I explain this right now? But anyways, looks like Luigi's probably not gonna move anywhere, despite he got himself a zero. And looks like Wario's gonna able to land on himself the lucky space, for able to farm some more mini stars in between. So, um, you know, something's worth mentioning about this also, is that, well, to be honest with you, I don't think there's that, that much I can, uh, that, that much else to say about this, apart from the fact that, well, eventually at this point until likely until by the end of May, that's uh, pretty much the definition about the fact that between Kirby's Return to Dreamland Let's Play, and especially noticeable with Donkey Kong Jungle Beats Let's Play at some point, that uh, those two Let's Plays will be finished by then. And hopefully we'll move on to the next set. So even then though, like for example, that well, we was able to do the Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games Let's Play when that usually comes up against. And um, also, same applies for uh, Pac-Man World 2. And um, hopefully by that time until July, despite the 2020, uh, you know, Japan Tokyo Olympics has been postponed, this means about the fact that we could at least try to deal with the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 Let's Play during on July, so... I slide, you slide, so run, jump, and slide to the goal. This minigame is pretty fun though, because you can able just, not only just trying to able to dodge uh, both things, but the control schemes can be a little bit different depending on what actions you get able to perform. Like, to simply just jump, you have to flick the Wii Remote upward, and then if you're trying to slide down, then you have to press the B button. So, even then though, Pretty cool, actually. But until you, when you get to the end of the actual mini game, then you have to waggle the Wii Remote a lot. Even then, though, because of that, this is where you're gonna have to be able to sprint it towards the end of the goal. So naturally speaking, it's a pretty fun and hectic uh, mini game to say the least for me, though. So yeah, you get the idea for that solutions, and also we got ourselves these familiar enemies from New Super Mario Bros. U. So either way, there's not much else to speak of. And there we go. It looks like it's gone pretty close between Luigi and Wario by the end. Well, to be more specifically, whenever they're trying to achieve, you know, third place in between. But either way, though, ultimately, though, Luigi did manage to win that. Well, at least in terms of third place position. Alright, so let's see how Luigi's gonna turn out. Oh, so sorry, Luigi, but farewell to your mini stars. And this is what happens right here. Not only do you able to lose 10 mini stars, 
but also you go all the way back to the beginning right there, but now you shift into a different wall. And also, the unlucky space has now disappeared, meaning it about the fact that you don't have to worry about this kind of stuff like this. So, I get a feeling that, okay, Warrior well, we simply managed to able to dodge the rest of this. So, either way though, let's see what the dice blocks does he manage to able to achieve for. But again, I just, like the, I just like the actual, there's actually more variety in this board, rather than just the forms of uh, pure and uh, plain uh, kind of stuff, unlike the previous boards. Well, nothing too bad or anything like that, but it's just uh, I kind of wish there was more variety in them. Well, that was probably just me anyway. So it looks like we're now going back to the other side now, because Waluigi has managed to lose 10 mini stars so far. So for the sake of clarity, let's go ahead and, uh, I don't know, should we just use this for now on? Um, well I suppose we could give it a go, even then no, we were going to able to save this up until for later. But let's just go ahead and get three, so just in case. Oh, I just realized that the last number we need to get in order to be able to unlock uh, the cage out of the Wii U gamepad, it was actually two. Oh yeah, two is the only ones left. Yeah, because of this though, differently from the previous sports in Mario Party 10 and Mario Party mode, uh, the difference is this time around though, between this board compared to the previous sports, is that Bowser is no longer going to be stuck into the actual cage. However though, here's the thing though, is the fact that the actual Bowser has now been replaced by Yellow Toad got trapped inside the cage. And the actual uh, condition on that is feels pretty similar to the ones you've accidentally able to unleash Bowser out of the cage, but except no, in the positive uh, aspects. Like, compared to the forms of when you accidentally unlock Bowser out of the cage, what happens is, is that you'll lose half of your mini stars, as you guys should already know. However though, if you manage to unlock Yellow Toad out, well, something more good will be able to happen to us. But anyway, speaking of skewers, here we have Skewer Skewery. So, solo player to select a direction to attack the with the skewers, and rifle teams can be able to just run and hide. This minigame does kind of remind me of Hazard Hold from Mario Party 9, except a noticeable difference is the fact that rather than taking place in the actual factory facility, instead it was actually takes place in some sort of a ruined structure. So, yeah, you get the idea for that point. So, either way, though, we just have to dodge. Um, a lot of skewers here, thankfully, at least if you memorize the actual uh, directional movements or something like that, you can able to actually feel safe from those walls as you can see right there. Oh goodness gracious, but at least Luigi and Waluigi did manage to get knocked out, but usually speaking, we still manage to win. How's that for that? So yeah, um, actually I'll get into more details as soon as whenever we, uh, if someone else managed to able to get Yellow Toad out, so... Uh, talking of unfortunate moments, there goes Waluigi yet again, but now we have to go further way back down, and, well, we have to go for all that climbing stuff again. But luckily, I finally found out, as soon as we're able to actually hit 2 on that slow dice block, despite we have to waste it, not only does it give us the opportunity to able to unlock Yellow Toad out of the Wii U gamepad um, for the actual cage, but also we might get ourselves the, um, the lucky space too. So hopefully we should able to farm some more mini stars. So in this case, you'll be rewarded 20 mini stars. So yeah, that's a pretty big deal. Especially noticeable how the fact that if you ever feel lucky enough, then you weren't able to actually achieve even more mini stars to top it off. Yeah, that's pretty cool though. So anyways, let's go ahead and get some more mini stars by simply going blast off from cannon to cannon, and hopefully we should be able to keep an eye up with a bunch lot, even though we haven't got that much compared to Wario's lot, but even then though, we got 16 nonetheless, compared to uh, 21 mini stars from Wario. Yeah, I was thought to myself about that too. Anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, keep on climbing upwards. Well, at least depending on luck, really. So, either way, though, that's all I can really expect at this point. So, but still, can't deny about that. But even then, though, I just want to classify that. Alright, so looks like Warrior's going to get himself his nerves going by simply able to get himself a 6. So yeah, not only does he able to get 10 mini stars, but steel stars, or stealing mini stars. Please don't get involved this time, please don't. Although, thankfully, he's gonna steal something from Luigi. 
Even though it could be worse though, if he managed to able to steal a half portion of mini stars though, I mean that would be kind of greedy honestly. But instead that he actually steals 10 mini stars from Luigi, so I'm pretty sure if you manage to steal a half portion of 43, that's uh, what Luigi previously had, I'm pretty sure he might able to steal like, I don't know, 21 or 22, it's all depending on the forms of calculations or something precisely. But whatever, and we got another mini game to play around with, and it's gonna be once again 1 versus 3. So let's see what the next minigame are we going to be playing through. And it looks like we have Moving Mushrooms, another new minigame. Seems like we actually got ourselves more new minigames in this board more than anything, so... Get Super and Gold Mushrooms in your cards. So, if you're in a team of three, you need to carefully guide the mushrooms to the red cards. But if you're in a team of one, then you have to deal with uh, three seesaws, and then you have to carefully try to guide the actual mushrooms to that color perspective, or in this case, uh, just, you know, the blue basket or cards, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes, though, I have to admit, though, that this minigame is alright and such, but even then, though, um, it might be pretty easy for the team of three, honestly, but as far as the team of one is concerned, you need to do a lot of work. Especially noticeable how the fact that you always have to deal with, like, a lot of stuff of how the fact that, you know. And I believe when it gets to the 15 seconds mark, then obviously everything else gets a lot more faster now. So even then, though, yeah, that's all I can say, bye. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, okay. At least we actually... Oh, jeez. Louise. Okay. At least we actually got enough points, though, compared to Waluigi only gets, like, 37 so far. But at least we did that pretty decently, though, as it is. So, anywho. Alright, so, we, naturally speaking, it's the fact that, um, well, we're almost nearly towards the end of this board already. Well, at least despite the fact that we actually didn't, uh, get any screw-overs, well, except in the begin- except in the beginning part, where, uh, Waluigi did manage to screw us up, during the forms of, uh, you know, the beginning, whenever he's trying to make us to take mini Z-Stars, Anyways, when it gets to the forms of the actual home straight uh, portion, that's uh, much like any other toad houses for that matter, you get yourselves a freebie dice block every time you come across into this part. And uh, because of this though, well, because of that, well, as soon as we get towards in this particular segment, this something might be very familiar to you. And here's Bowser's throne. And here's Bowser himself. Now, as you can see, he breathes uh, the actual fireball, as you can see. And because of that, we really want to avoid those fire marks on these spaces. And what happens if what happens is, is that if you accidentally land onto those little fire marks on the top portion of the board, on a, for the sake of the forms of this segment, what happens is, is that you'll lose half of your mini stars. So yeah, that could be a little bit of a misunfortunate thing right there, or some in some instances, that, again, depending on luck, but uh, at least it kind of reminds me of, like a 2D side-scrolling Mario segment where you're able to actually like... Well, to be more specifically though, uh, it was the new Super Mario Bros. Wii, new Super Mario Bros. 2, and new Super Mario Bros. U um, segments where you have to dodge a lot of fireballs and then just trying to be safe from those little walls in between. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that, but except we're now onto the actual vehicle in order to do that, rather than just walking on foot, or in this case, walking individually, so... But you know, you get these suggestions here. Thankfully, if you manage to land on the backspace, however, though, um, if you somehow land on that, um, the actual, um, backspace, if you somehow accidentally go back onto that fire spots on that spaces, it does not count as the effects, so at least we're able to be okay with that. Alright, so it looks like Waluigi's gonna able to be safe here. And it's a good thing we got ourselves the 456 dice block to begin with, so that means that we could potentially try to make our way towards the end of the board. At least after this little sequence right there. Strangely enough though, anyone else doesn't seem to get hit right there, which I think is actually a, uh, a smart move. Even when it comes to the forms of likely to have some bit of strategies, in terms of dice blocks in general. And we didn't get a mini game for it either, until whenever we get to the end though. So it doesn't matter if we can either get 4, 5, or 6, 
But either way, we made it to Bowser himself. Even though despite the fact that we've already taken down Bowser twice during the actual corresponding Let's Play of this, so naturally speaking, I'm pretty sure we might as well face off with a different boss instead. Even though it would be nice to be able to fight against with Bowser for the final time, but even then, instead, we got ourselves Mega Blooper's Bubble Battle, which appears to be originated from the uh, the normal boss battle in Whimsical Waters. So anyway, though, completes the panels to attack. So yeah, it's been like, um, I would classify saying like, kind of like a blooper barrage minigame for My Party 9, except a noticeable difference now is that rather than just dealing with the cannon shots in order to deal damage on him, instead we need to complete these puzzle panels in order to attack him. Think of like, uh, King Boo's puzzle attack for My Party 9 as well, except that rather than just dealing with the forms of the sideways formations of the actual control scheme, Instead, that we need to able to point the Wii remotes vertically at all times. So, yeah, some things want to classify for something like this, but either way, though, all you have to do is just basically just have to find, you know, all the correct pieces and all that stuff. And that's all you really have to do in this battle, though. So, even then, though, kind of a letdown, to be honest, but either way, though, we'll just able to actually just for say this right now. We're actually glad that we can able to show this off. So, the only misunfortunate thing about boss battles that we haven't shown off is, uh, well, I would say PT's uh, bomb battle, and especially noticeable with uh, King Boo's tricky tiles, because uh, these are the only two boss battle mini games we're actually missing on. So, hopefully, though, what if we get onto free play at some point after the extra stuff, then we can able to show off some of the missing mini games of how this game offers us to. Yeah, during at some point during, I would say at some point in June. So either way though, because of that though, this Let's Play is going to be significantly shorter compared to the forms of how it does it. Well, I would say it's the second shortest Mario Party Let's Play we'll be doing for our channel next to the top 100. But still, it just comes across as like, you know, questionable ch uh, choices sometimes. So anyway, so let's go ahead and keep on getting some more, uh, you know, Jigsaw puzzle, panel, pieces, whatever you want to call it them. So, either way though, yeah. Don't shoot the actual bloopers, by the way, because I'm pretty sure if you're able to get the wrong piece or something like that, even though it's hard to explain about this sometimes, but either way though. Oh yeah, by the way, every once in a while though, is the fact that whenever when the Mega Blooper managed to able to squirt some, uh, uh, ink stuff at us, this means that you're able to cover up the bottom parts, which... To me though, it doesn't feel that much challenging compared to where it used to be because originally I was trying to able to cover up every single panel as much as possible, but we can barely see anything, which as a result I was like, what's the point about trying to able to use that anyway, even in this case trying to showcase off some panels to begin with? I don't know, I'm just a little bit too nitpicking right here. But anyway, it's time for the final results in Mario Party 10's final board in Mario Party mode. And you can see Bowser Jr. in the background right there, so... Well, despite that Bowser usually doesn't show up at all, even though despite the fact that we didn't finish him off in that board, but at least we've already dealt with him twice, by the way, so... Minigame Star goes to us, no doubt about that. And lastly, we have Far Star, which is rewarded to Wario. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious they'll give it to Wario just because of that, you know, with that double dice block that he had. So, even then, it was a pretty good move for him, because if you can, he can able to avoid a lot of hazards, so, including the finale portion as well. So anyways, we can expect what the who the winner is, it will definitely be Mario himself, so even then, it has to be expected at this point. Yeah, Mario, you are the superstar indeed. And in fact, you're actually getting pretty close to able to celebrate your Super Mario Brothers game for 35 years until, let's just say, about 4 months' time now. So even then, though, let's check a look at the results. Wow, we actually beat him by Wario for 7 mini stars above from it. Hey, do you remember back in Mario Party 9 that Orange Chetty usually done the final board, or the, in this case, Bowser Station? Oh yeah, was some sort of like that happen. Uh, basically he did one by two mini stars. Oh yeah, I remember that, but not so much in here. But, pretty close though. Just pretty close though. 
yeah, I do apologize for that um, awkward belching at this point. So, even then, let's see what the actual photographer actually contains. Both highlights for Wario and Waluigi for the start of the mini star comeback. So, I'm guessing that makes it a little bit obvious for the sake of time. So, with that being said, though, we are basically conclude the Mario Party mode right now. So, for the sake of this matter, though, is the fact that I'm pretty sure that we're going to have the endings off at this point right there. So, join us tomorrow for more of Let's Play of Mario Party 10. That's we're going to be hit on to the next main mode in this game, which appears to be the big one, actually. And that is Bowser Party. So, even then, though, this should be pretty fun. Especially noticeable how near this goes. So see you guys tomorrow. Later, fellas.